This form collects information on the presence of animals. The sources of data can be very diverse, direct sightings or recordings with camera traps, the detection of signs, animals found dead on the road, in the field, or hunted, which can provide high spatial accuracy. It is also possible to include telemetry data, but instead of using all the locations for each animal, you should include the polygon that indicates its home range or report data associated with referenced grids. Another possibility is to include information on hunting grounds with surveys of abundance that cannot be included in the hunting database model or in the ENET Wild Project density model. The absence data are of great value in this project but need to be associated with monitoring and to indicate the effort made. In this case, it may also be useful to indicate which other species have been observed during this sampling, where wild boar have not been detected. The database for the occurrence data has a similar structure to the rest of the databases, hunting and density. The first section concerns identification data in which we only have to fill in the data level column indicating whether the data refer to monitoring data, events or were obtained from an observation. An observation can be an animal roadkill. An event may correspond to a transect of a relative abundance method. And monitoring, for example, may refer to data that could be from a hunting season in which the wild boar is or is not present, or may be the result of a study not focused on wild boar, but which contains records of the absence of this species. Then you must indicate the person making the registration. Also indicate the code of your original database, as well as the location from which the data was obtained then we can obtain different types of spatial data. Although the coordinates will be the most frequent in this type of data, there is also data from polygons, grids or territorial units. If you have coordinate data, you have to indicate whether it is real or estimated data. Remember that these variables are obligatory. If they are not filled in, it is possible that the database will not be accepted or that you will be asked to correct it before it is accepted. When including coordinate values, the measurement error must be incorporated. You may not have the coordinates, but you do have a polygon associated with a hunting or sample area. In this case, you have to enter the data by sending a zip file including the three shapefile layers and indicating the name of the file. In the model, you have to indicate the code of the file with the shapefile spatial layer or the code of the specific polygon within each shapefile. Or include the file name of the WKT format, in which case this format is used, although the shapefile format is preferable for the project. Another possibility is to use grids, as some information is collected using standard 1 km square or 10 km square grids. In this case, the grid should be indicated using one of the formats provided, such as UTM or European Environment Agency grids. It is also mandatory to indicate the reference system as well as the country using a drop-down menu. Once the country has been selected, it is immediately possible to select the region or the province in which your data is located. The area type indicates whether it is a sampling area and the surface area. Afterwards, the period in which the registration is made must be indicated. It will usually be day data because you will have data 
from individual animal records at a particular location. Although in the case of monitoring, this may be a time interval, the type of measure. Here, you indicate whether the data refer to distribution records or whether this information originates from abundance data. Remember that if abundance data cannot be transformed into density data, then they will not be useful for the density model, but could be included as presence data. In this cell, you can indicate whether more than one animal has been registered. The effort made and the unit of measurement must be indicated. This is especially important if we are interested in absence data. If sampling has been well designed with an adequate effort and there is still no presence of wild boar, then we can consider them as adequate absence data. In fact, the status data must indicate whether the sampling reports presence or absence data. The data should also indicate whether the animal has been observed alive, dead, recorded by signs and signals, as well as indicating what type of registration method we have used, or if we have used camera traps or have found dead animals in the field or animals recorded by telemetry. Finally, it is necessary to indicate whether or not the data have been validated and how. If possible, the sex and age of the animal should also be recorded. If more than one animal has been registered, this information can be included in the notes section.